Our Father and our God, we thank you for our study here. We're praying that you'll help us, that as we speak to every heart, we'll respond properly and say yes to you in Jesus' name. We'll say no to the devil. We'll say no to the world. We'll say no to sin. Every time, in every way, we'll say yes to the Lord. We pray that you give us the grace to stand by that word yes to the Lord every time in Jesus' name. We pray that as we study this word now, you help us that the things we learn, we will never, never forget in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. I welcome you today in Jesus' name. Actually, what makes us victorious is the Lord's will. And the way or the means by which he makes us victorious is through the power in his word. And I want to encourage you children, it is very important that we're studying the word of God today. You may not know. But many of us who are adults today, if you will course one by one. Many of us will tell you that it is what we learned in our formative years, that is, when we were young. We heard them, we took note of them, and we took decisions with them. Those were the things that built us up, the things that have made us what we are today. And when we learn all these things, note them and see the decisions we are taking as a result of the things we are learning. Today we are in the first chapter of the book of Ruth. As we look at all the books of the Bible, do you remember how many books we have in the Bible? We have 66. You will see that some names of the book of the Bible, they are not the names of people. They are the names or the titles that describe the content or the writing within the book. For example, Genesis. Genesis just means beginning. And when you talk of beginning, you talk of the beginning of the human race, the beginning of sin in the world, the beginning of quarreling in the world, the beginning of anything that took place, that is taking place in the world, you find that in the book of Genesis. And that's what Genesis means, beginning. Exodus means, uh, you know, some people are making an exit. That means they're going out from somewhere and they're going out to another place because they are making exit. Therefore, the title of that is um, Exodus. And then you go on and on and on. The first book, actually, that has the name of somebody on the book. Which book is that? Joshua. That book mentions the name of Joshua and puts it at the title because Joshua was the central person that God used in the land of Canaan, dividing the places one by one. And the next book is not the name of one man because there were many, many people, but many of them were called the judges. And so you have the judges. Now, after the judges, you have rules. Then you have Samuel, then you have the kings, then, and so on. When you come to the New Testament too, you'll find there are some general names. For example, the Acts of the Apostles. Peter is not named. Matthew is not named because all the apostles are getting something done. And we have the account, the Acts of the Apostles. But then you also have Romans. That's not the name of a person. That's the name of what? Rome is the name of a city. Because the letter is reaching to a city, so you have the central thing there. You have the epistle to the Romans. But then you have Matthew. That's the name of a person. You have Mark, the name of a person. You have Luke. You have John. Then you have and the last book of the Bible was that. Revelation. That's not the name of a man. That's telling us God revealed himself. And he revealed the things that are going to take place. And therefore he has given us a revelation. Now, 
of the books of the Bible that have the names of people on top as the title. There are only two books that carry the name of women. And uh, we have, who are they? Ruth and Esther. Ruth was a Gentile from Moab. Esther, a Jewish from, uh, actually from Israel. When you read the story, you'll see how they got to the place where they got to, and how the Lord actually made use of both of them, Ruth and Esther. But what singles them out? As you think about Ruth, and as you think about Esther, although many women are mentioned in the Bible, from the Genesis, we have Eve, we have many other women, all through to the New Testament, but the names of those other women, they did not appear, and they do not appear as the titles of some books in the Bible. These two women, Ruth and Esther, what marks them out? Are special that now we have names as the titles of these books what marks them out is the one word decision they took some wonderful decisions and it is uh, it's your decision that marks you out whether you are going to be a great fellow you are going to be somebody we will never hear of look at the decision of proof in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 and Ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest I will go and where thou lodgest I will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy God my God that was the decision she took and that decision led her to something wonderful and that decision put her name in a very conspicuous place in the book of god and that decision makes everyone that treats the bible to know that name and that decision also makes many people today to want to call their daughters ruth then we have the decision of esther open your bible if you can find it very quickly to the book of Esther. Esther. That's very near Job. And Job, you know where Job is. Esther, Esther chapter 4. And see the decision that also brought her into the record of the book of God. Esther chapter 4. From verse 15 to verse 16. Then Esther bade them return. Mordecai this answer, go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me. Neither and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so I will go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. She was willing to make a sacrifice and she was willing to deny herself and she was even willing to suffer whatever the suffering will be so that she will bring deliverance to the people of God, the Jews. That decision marked her out as a special woman. You know the decisions in your life? The decisions mark you out whether you are going to be a good boy or a good girl whether you are going to grow up into a man, into a woman that will do something specific in life. You know, we take decisions every day. I'll get up. I'll go to the bathroom and clean up myself. I will take my breakfast. I will not lie in bed for the rest of the day. I will pack all my books. I will go to school. That's decision. And then when we finish our class, then I say, I must go back home immediately. I must not be in around. My parents are expecting me at all. That's the decision I take. And eventually, they are going to take exam. And I say, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to study, and I'm going to be the best in the class. That's a decision. And then eventually, I say, well, I need to take decision on spiritual things. 
I am going to give my life to the Lord. I get saved. That's a decision. After giving my life to the Lord, I'm going to keep on studying the Word of God. I want to know the Bible. Dig into the Bible. I want to know the Bible as much as the pastor. In fact, I even want to know it more than the pastor. That's a decision. And then I want to be sanctified. That's a decision. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. A decision. And then I want to be telling other people, while they are telling their lies and their jokes and their gambling and they're doing other things, I'm going to be talking about Jesus every day. That's the decision I have taken. And whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever happens, I'm going to keep on serving the Lord. That's a decision. Those decisions you make in life will also make you what you ought to be. And so we're going to find out here decisions. In the book of Ruth, we have decisions. El Melech, the father of these two boys here, took a decision. And then the children too, they followed after that decision. They chose the country of Moab. That's a decision. They landed over there and settled there. That was their decision. And then eventually when El Melech and the two boys died, and now Naomi decided, I'm going to back, go back to the land of Canaan, the people of God. That's a decision. And then Opa said, well, I will go. Are you sure? Have you considered it? Do you really want to follow? All right, I changed my mind. I will go back to my people and keep on worshipping idols. That's a decision. And then Ruth said, I will follow on. Till the very end, let's go together. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. That's a decision. And then they go to the land of Israel. And Ruth said, I'm going to be living with you. And I will take care of you. You are old mama at this time. You need my care. You need my support. That is a decision. Eventually, Ruth got married. That was a decision. And that decision made her to become the great, 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 great grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you see the decisions are present in the book of Ruth. And the decisions are so very important. And the decisions you make will either develop you or destroy you. Two words. Decisions. Decisions will either develop you if it's a good decision, or the decision will destroy you. If it's a bad decision. The way uh, they say it in some books is that decisions make or mar the man. That means the decision can make the man. Or the decision can mar, M-A-R. Decision can mar the man. That is, twist him, distort him, destroy him, change his life and bend him so low in fact can wipe him out that is now nobody anymore that's what we call a non-entity non-entity it becomes a nobody so your decision in life is the thing that either makes you or mass you or decision may develop you or destroy you your decision may take you to heaven Unfortunately, decision may also take you to where? Hell. So today we're looking at first chapter of Ruth, and we're looking at uh, four points. Number one point, two boys in a strange land. Number two, two girls at a crossroad. Number three, one sister with a good decision. And number four, Two travelers who got home simply. Two, two, one, two. Now, we go to point number one. Two boys in a strange land. In Ruth chapter one. Are you there? Ruth chapter one, reading from verse one. Now, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elmelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, 
Malon, and Chinion. Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah. And he came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elmelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. And they to them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died, also both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. That's the beginning of the story. It's an account of the tragedy, of the bad thing that came upon the family of El Melik. But you know, the decision that they took was the wrong decision. There had been farming in the land of Judah. Bethlehem Judah was the city, and then there was farming. And without any prayer, without finding out from the Lord, what step do I take? Where do I go? What do I do? This man decided that he was going to take his family and they were going to go to a place called Moab. Unfortunately, the choice he made of Moab was a very wrong choice. Because actually, you know, many, many years before, the Lord had said something about Moab. Maybe he didn't read the word of God. Maybe he didn't listen to the teachers who were teaching the word of God. He would have known that he shouldn't have gone to the land of Moab to stay there in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 3. An Amorite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. You see, the Lord had uh, given restriction. I told them that they will not come into you. And of course, if they will not come into you, you will not go into them. But Elmelech took decision without consulting the word of God. Whenever you take a decision and say, I will do this will go there. I will say it. I will learn it. I will. I will. And then you cancel out the word of God from what you will to do. Then you are going to take a wrong decision. But these two boys, they are the concern that we have. You see these two boys, they were old enough to have asked their parents, Papa, Mama, is this right? Is the place to go? Papa, have you asked the priest? Mama, have you talked to the high priest? Have you spoken to the people that are leading us? The boys didn't say that. Have you consulted the word of God? Papa or Mama, during our morning devotion, we never prayed about this. Why don't we pray? Before we go to this new place, strange land where we're going. These two boys never prayed about it and they never persuaded their own parents that they should pray about the matter. So they just followed and they left. You know, sometimes uh, some things happen that you are young people and it may be that there is a famine in the land, not enough food to eat. And there is no accommodation, convenient accommodation in the city. And then Papa and Mama may just decide, children, we're going home. We're going to the village. That means that uh, say bye-bye to your school fellows and say bye-bye to your friends who are not coming to this city again. We're going. And if you are a real child of God, you'll say, Papa, have you prayed? Mama, have you asked the Lord? Did you see counseling from our leaders in the church? You'll find out. If you don't find out and you'll say, Papa said so, Mama said so, we are going. Who knows what will happen in the village? And so these two boys followed into the strange land. 
there have been other boys that went into strange land, not because of Papa, not because of but because they themselves, they took a wrong decision and they went off and they sought for it. Look at it in Luke. In Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 11. And he said, a certain man had how many sons? Tell me out loud. Two sons. And the young girl then said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous, careless, violent, immoral living. And when he had spent all, he had wasted everything he had. There arose a mighty famine in, the, in that land. And he began to be in war. He began to be in need. He began to be hungry. He began to feel his wretchedness. Now you will see this boy. He took a decision. And this decision was not by prayer. It was not by the word of God. It was by the permissive will of the Father. There is the power will of the father there's the permissive will of the father the permissive will is uh, what you get by force i want to go well do you have to go why don't you stay here you have the convenience of the home you have the security of the home you have the care of your parents you have the devotion in the morning you have the love in the family you have everything you want don't you no i want to go but you are too young to be alone by now. We still should be taken. No, I must go. All right. If you want to go, go. That's permissive will. That's not the perfect will. That's not the right thing. So this young man, he got the permissive will from the father. You want to go? That's what you want. You want to go and suffer and be alone where there's no control, no teaching, no doctrine, no church, nothing. Yes, I want to go. Go. And then it says, he came into a famine because of the wrong decision. Well, look at Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 17. Which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. You see those who go astray. Those who take the wrong decision, that's the thing they do. Number one, they forsake the guide of their youth. The uh, youth leader, the Bible study leader, the one that is at uh, the school visitor is saying, this is not right. You've been born again. You're a child of God. You're one of the people we depend upon here. Why are you doing like this? Now, do right. Behave well. And yet, after that, a school visitor has gone. He says, let them say their own. I'm going to do what I want. And nobody is going to control me. He forsaketh the guide of his youth. Then he forgetteth the covenant of his God. That is, when you forsake the counseling, you forget the teaching. The next thing is that you even forget the covenant, the vow, the consecration, the promise you have made unto the Lord before. These two boys, they entered into the land of uh, Moab. Now, I'm going to give you a verse. And this verse, I remember, we first got this verse from the Bible in a youth meeting. Actually, we're having a youth uh, Bible study. And I still remember the location right now because at that time, many, many years ago, I was teaching in the secondary school. And as I was teaching in the secondary school, we had these boys, we had these girls. Many of them now are even uh, doctors, lecturers, professors in university, and I'm, I've gone to various states. I've met some of them, and they come to say hello to me whenever I visit the state. And they say, do you remember me? I would say, what's your name? Then they tell me their names. They said, you taught me maths in the class, and you taught me this. And they'll tell me the way I used to teach them, and the way we used to have wonderful time together. Then they will say, I was in your Bible study group when you were our teacher. 
and uh, some of them now they have their own hospitals and they have real medical doctors some of them professors now in universities and uh, they tell me all these stories and some of them are outside the country and some of them are in the country here there's one verse i'll never forget when in the bible study that day and this girl I don't want to mention her name now. I still remember the name because she was one of our uh, girls that led a Bible studies in the groups. In fact, that time, although I was her teacher, I had not uh, discovered that verse myself. That girl was the one to read this verse of scripture for the first time. She was uh, encouraging and exhorting all the other uh, young people. And I was sitting there, as a national coordinator is sitting there now, and I was just listening. And this girl called the verse. And I opened it, and she read it, and she explained it, and it was a wonderful time. But before I tell you, you are going to promise me that you will mark it in your Bible. Are you there? Will you mark it if I tell you? And that after the, after the study today, you are going to go over it and over it and over it. Are you going to do that? Because if you are not going to do it, I will not tell you. I'll teach many other things. This important verse, uh, not, how many of you want that verse? You want it? Real, real seriously. All right. I'm trying to make up my mind. Because you have to take a decision. Uh, because decisions are very important. I have to take a decision. Should I give them? Shouldn't I give them? If I give them, are they going to do what they have promised me? Will you do what you have promised me? All right. You know, I wrote it there. It's Osea chapter 8 verse 3. Osea chapter 8 verse 3. And I still remember it right now. When that girl, now a you know, big woman now doing this and doing that. And by the grace of God, she's still a Christian, a believer, even now. And it's Hosea chapter 8, verse 3. It says, Israel has cast off the sin that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. You see, when she read that verse, I said, I never read that before. Where did this girl get uh, this verse? And then I went it over and over and over myself. And I've discovered from that time until this very time that every boy, every girl that forsook salvation, that forsook the word of the Lord, that forsook the good thing of the Lord, the enemy has always pursued such a girl, such a boy. And so here we are, the two boys here. They followed their parents. They forsook the land of Canaan. They forsook the land of Israel. That was the land of promise. That was the good thing the Lord had given unto them. And they forsook that thing which was good. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. I pray you will not forsake the good thing. I said you will not forsake the good thing. Because you see, when people are taking decisions, it looks all right when they look at it. It seems as if, yes, we are going to do it and everything will work out fine. In Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. 14, 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. When Elimelech and Naomi, and Malon, and Chilion, when that family of four, when they were leaving the land of promise, and the land of the people of God, and they were going to the land of Moab, they felt that was the right thing. And nobody could persuade them to do otherwise. But then, Elmelech died there. The two boys died there. That's what it says. There is a way that seems right unto a man. And yet, the end thereof, is uh, the way of death. We have seen the decision that these people took. He took them to Moab, a strange land, with strange gods, with strange worship. I pray you will never depart from the Lord. Now, when they got there, those two boys were growing up. And as they were growing up, something happened to them. It came to the time they were thinking of getting married. 
Because you see, when you are uh, growing up, you go to a particular stage, you now see that it is time to get married. Not time yet, you are still too young, but it comes to the time when you now feel that it is time to get married. And they got marriage in Moab. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. That they got married in Moab. Because again, we're going to return to Deuteronomy. Come back to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And you will see the commandment the Lord had given them. How they will marry, how they will not marry. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto a son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Here they were told that these people of God, they will not marry unbelievers. But these people in Moab, they were unbelievers. Ruth was an unbeliever. Opa was an unbeliever. But now they had settled in a strange land. Listen. Strange land strange action attracts strange practice if you go to a strange land if you join a strange company a strange group of people you will soon begin to do strange things therefore they are gone into the strange land and what do we find them doing we find them doing strange things now they got married over there Malon got married to Ruth, and uh, Chilion got married to Opa. And eventually, both of those sons died. And Naomi was left alone. Here came a critical point in her life. An important moment in her life. What will she do now? Again, a moment of decision. She heard that God had blessed the people in the land of Israel. Look at it in Ruth chapter 1, verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went, they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice, and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Here we are at a crossroad. You know what a crossroad is? A crossroad is like a junction. You have one road pointing this way, one road pointing that way. And you do not have the road map. And you do not know where you want to go. Actually, you know where you want to go. You do not know the road that leads there. You want to go to the final place that will make you happy. That will make you feel secure. That will build up your life. But you say, if I take this way, will I be personally and permanently happy? Or is it this other way I will take? While you are thinking of that in your mind, you are at a crossroad, whether here or there. That's the crossroad. So these two girls were at a crossroad, Ruth and Opa. What should we do? Should we go back to Moab? We have seen the light. Although we in Moab were cursed people, and now the Lord has made the light to shine across our pathway. Here is salvation. Here is the God of Israel. Here is proper worship. And at the end of the whole thing, there is heaven. And if we go back to Moab, then we'll perish. But we have never known this place, the land of Israel, where this woman is going. Will they receive us there? Will they be friendly there? 
Will the relatives of this woman welcome her and welcome us? Now, if we stay in Moab, our friends are there. Our people are there. Our language, uh, tribe, they are there. If we go to this uh, new place, it's going to be a new language, new kind of feeding and new kind of food, a new environment. Which one are we going to do? What is our choice? That's a crossroad. And so when Nami told them and he said, well, I'm going back. We made a mistake before, but two wrongs do not make Tell me out loud. A right. That is, we made one mistake before. That's one wrong. If I stay here now, that doubles the wrong thing that we have done. And two wrongs will not make a right. Therefore, I will correct. I will turn 180 degrees. I'll go back to where I came from. To the God of Israel. And to all the provision that he has for me. And now she has taken her decision. She said, now you have to take your decision. Ruth and Opa, will you go with me? Oh, they say, yes, we must go with you. And they kissed her. Now understand that kind of kiss is not a man to a woman. It's not a girl to a teacher. It's a woman to a woman. That was their culture, you know, in our own land here. And uh, when a young and when you see somebody that is very, very old, if you are a boy, you do what? You do what? You prostrate. If uh, you go to class uh, tomorrow, and then you are a boy, and then you see your teacher. And when you see your teacher, ah, you say, Mr. Joseph, how are you? And then you try to kiss her, kiss him. You say, what came on you? You have mental problem. And uh, Ruth and Opa decreased uh, Nami. That's their culture, you know. Americans and uh, Europeans, they don't prostrate. Africans prostrate. And uh, girls, when girls see somebody that is older, uh, what do they do? They kneel down. That's the culture here. And, but in America or in uh, Israel, they don't do that. So what they do over there, instead of kneeling down, instead of prostrating, they will kiss one another. But it's the uh, young girls to the mother-in-law. So it is not a kiss between a boy and a girl. You understand? Tell me out loud. You understand? Uh-huh. So don't say, uh, Pastor told us in the... Uh, in the class that they kissed one another. Look at it very well. Now, so they kissed her and uh, they said, we'll go with you. Then she now began to explain to them. In verse 11, Naomi said, turn again my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there, any, are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry, will ye wait for them till they are grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Opa considered it at the crossroad. Now, here was the test. And in the test, Opa failed that test. The test came at the crossroad. Where are you going to go? What are you going to choose? Are you going to follow Naomi or are you going to go back into idol worship? And she cried, she kissed, she did everything, but eventually she said, I cannot pass the test. I cannot go with you. And right at that crossroad of life, she failed the test and went back into idol worship. That's the last time we will ever hear about Opa. Read through your Bible. In Ruth, in Samuel, in the Kings, 
anywhere, read everywhere, you'll never find the name of Opa again. She faced out of the life of religious, godly people. Not only that, she faded out of the record of God. Even in heaven now, sorry to say, she is not there, nowhere to be found. When you take a wrong decision, and you turn back away from the Lord, and you leave the people of God, that may be the last time we hear about you. But it is when you stay with the people of God, and when you stay in the word of God, then you'll pass the test. Here is somebody that passed the test. Her name is Ruth. Wonderful name. Wonderful name. Her name, Ruth, she passed the test. And now going on, before I go on, why did the upper, why did she behave like that? Well, because she was a double-minded person. And she'll say yes, she'll say no. She'll say, I will go, then she'll say, I will not go. She will say, I love the Lord, then she'll say, I love dancing. She will say, I want to read the Bible, then she'll say, I also like to read the uh, comics. She will say, I want to pray. Then she will say, eh, I also want to go and uh, do Kalu Kalu or what they are doing in all those, uh, all those places. Uh, she will say, no, I will not drink again. Then she will say, I will drink a little. Indecision, double-mindedness. That is the thing that ruined that young girl. And if you are like that, I always say, you know, I will, I will not. I will, I will not. I will, I will not. That person will be ruined and destroyed in James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And in verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded person. Double-minded. Wanting to go forward, wanting to go back, wanting to turn right, wanting to turn left. Not being able to take a decision to serve the Lord and stay by that decision. A double-minded boy, a double-minded girl is unstable in all his ways, in all her ways. She looked back, she went back. In Genesis chapter 19, quickly, Genesis chapter 19. Reading from verse 17. When the angels delivered Lot and his wife and his two daughters from Sodom and Gomorrah, they were told very clearly in verse 17, and it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. In verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him, and she became, what? A pillar of salt. A pillar of salt. That is, she just died instantly because she looked back. And the husband, the two daughters, they moved on. Now, we want to now see the decision of Ruth. Point number three. One sister is a good decision. You will see something very clearly here. Point one, I said two boys. I didn't say two brothers. Two boys. Because these were boys that couldn't even tell their parents, have you prayed? Is that decision of the Lord? Did you seek counseling? Have you seen the pastor? The step I, we are taking is this of the Lord? They didn't check up. That's why I said two boys in a strange land. Now I said two girls at a crossroad. Because it was their decision that will now make us to know whether they are really people of God or not the people of God. And the decision that Ruth took is what makes us now to call her sister. One sister with a good decision. After Naomi had said, well, See your friend. See Opa. She had gone back. And since she has gone back, why don't you follow her? You are the same age. You know one another's language. You are friendly together. Your circumstances are the same. You married two brothers. And so that brought you to become friendly. And now you had the same trouble. You lost those two men. And uh, what are you going to do now? 
and I'm so old that I cannot promise you anything. She has gone back. Why don't you go back? We we'll learned something about Ruth here. Ruth knew that friendship with an age mate is nothing to be compared with the worship of God. And therefore she said, although we have been friends, although we have been together, each one has her life to live. She has her own life to live. I have my own life to live. Her decision is for her. My decision is for me. That's what you need to learn in your life. That others may take any decision. They may go anywhere they want to go. But you will single yourself out. You will say they have their lives to live. I have my own life to live. They may decide they want to backslide. That's them. Me, I want to remain with the Lord. They decide they do not want to come to a church like this, teaching holiness. That's their decision. For me, I want to serve the Lord because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Now come to Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. When uh, Naomi had said, See, your own sister, she has gone back. Return thou unto thy sister-in-law. Ruth said, Entreat me not. Don't force me to go back. I've chosen the good thing. Entreat me not. Beg me not. Don't plead with me to leave you or to return from following after you. For whither thou goest, it may be far, the road may be rough, and we may be lonely on that road. We may be just you and old woman myself a young woman all the same where thou goest i will go where thou lodgest i will lodge you know what it means to lodge somewhere it means to live somewhere it's as uh, she said where you live i will live there may not be air con there may not be fan there may not be carpet there may not be rug there may not be good ceiling, there may not be electricity, there may not be any good, but because God is there, because the word of God is there, because the love of God is also there, because that's the way to take me to heaven, I will not look at the material things, I'm going to lodge where you lodge. Thy people shall be my people. I've never seen them. I've never known them. They don't even know me now. But because they are worshipping the true God, I am going to worship that same true God. Thy God shall be my God. Where thou diest, I will die. What that means is, as we are going, I know you are not returning to the land of Moab. I know you are going to remain in Israel till you die. After you have died, I will not come back to the land of Moab. I will remain there till I get old, until I die eventually. That means she was saying, I will never backslide, even if you die, because you are getting old. Even after you have left, I will still be there in, uh, in that same place. I'll get old and die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. That she was saying, uh, when she said, the Lord do so to me and more. If I change my decision, she was saying that the Lord will punish her if she changed her decision. And so you will see here that she had a good decision. She had chosen to serve the Lord and nobody will be able to take that thing away from her. In Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Reading from verse 42. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. Which shall not be taken away from her. One thing is needful. Find out that thing. Salvation. The knowledge of the word of God. Sanctification of holiness. One thing is needful. The one important thing that will take you to heaven. That thing is needful, find it out, grab it, possess it, own it, and then keep it. Then nobody will be able to take it away from you. How do we take good decisions today? Very important question. Number one, read the Bible. If you want to take a good decision, read the 
Bible. Number two, pray. Pray. After you have read the Word of God, you find out what does the Bible say. On this step, I want to take this decision I'm making. What does the Bible say? Then you pray about it. And then three, you look unto the Lord. Look unto Jesus. And then number four, seek counseling. Ask counsel from those who are older and from those who are in you in the way of the Lord. Let's now, before we go to the last point, think about some points in the life of Ruth. Ruth was sick and determined not to serve idols anymore. There were idols in Moab, and Ruth determined that now I've given my life to the Lord, I've taken my decision to follow the Lord, and I will not turn back, I will not serve idols anymore. Number two, she was consecrated to God. You can see the language of consecration. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I will freely give. I will ever love and adore him. That's consecration. She has surrendered everything and she said, Naomi, do not tell me to go back away from you. Number three, she loved Naomi. Because that was the only one person she knew who could teach her and lead her in the way of the Lord. And uh, she decided, I will not leave that teacher. I will not leave this Naomi. Because she's the one revealing to me the mind of God. I will go with you wherever you go. Number four, she separated herself from the tradition of Moab and from the worldliness in Moab. Number five, she was eager to serve the Lord till the very end. And so the two of them, they went together. Come back to Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1 from verse 19. Point number four, two travelers who got home safely. Two travelers who got home safely. In verse 19, so they two went until they came to Bethlehem. Do you remember Bethlehem? I said, do you remember Bethlehem? That's where eventually Jesus Christ was born. And while they were coming, coming from the straight land, they came to Bethlehem, where Jesus eventually was born. That was a good place they came to. And it came to pass, when they, that were, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, is this me? And eventually... We're told in verse 22, so Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem, Bethlehem again, in the beginning of the barley harvest. Plenty had come, prosperity had come. In fact, uh, when they left some time ago, it was at a time of famine, but now that they returned, the match, the harvest already taking place. They eventually got home. And they lived there until they went to a better home in heaven. I pray that as we're taking our journey to heaven, you will get home safely in Jesus' name. They started the journey, but they did not go back until they got home. They kept on walking, they kept on moving, they never stopped. And uh, Naomi never left the land of Israel again. She said, I, got, I went away before, I backslid before, there's no backsliding anymore now. I'm going to remain in this land, going to remain with the people of God until the very end. If you are backsliding before, now that you are returning back to the Lord, you ought to take your decision, no backsliding again. I said no backsliding again. Now you will remain with the Lord. She had learned a lesson, a big lesson, in a very hard way. She went out with husband and two sons into the strange land. In the strange land, she lost the husband, she lost the two sons, and then she came back home empty-handed, so to say, only with Ruth. 
and she decided, I will never go back away from the Lord again. Never go back to the world again. In the case of Ruth, she came to the land of the people of God. She started worshipping God, learning the word of God. Eventually she got married and good things began to happen. And eventually she became uh, what uh, we call the ancestress of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, before we pray. Matthew chapter 1. From verse 1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Look at this. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. That word begat means um, gave birth to. In verse 3, Judas begat Phares and Zarah of Taman. And Phares begat Eshron. And Eshram begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab. And Aminadab begat Nahashon. Nahashon begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Boaz. Boaz of Rechab. At Rechab. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. That's how Jesus came into the world. Anywhere they mention the name of Jesus and they are tracing how Jesus came, they will mention Ruth. I pray that anywhere they mention Jesus, they will mention your name. That you are taking a decision. And that decision is also making Christ to come to know other people and to save other people. I want you to think about the decisions you have made in your life. If you have made any bad decision, you will say, Lord, help me. I cancel those bad decisions now. Now I'm going to take a good decision. Let's rise up and pray. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Good decisions will make your life, will develop your life. Bad decisions will ruin your life, wreck your life, mar your life, destroy your life. Have you decided to follow Jesus? That's a good decision you need to take in your life. To be with the people of God. To be in the church where holiness is taught. Decide. Decide. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. If you have taken a bad decision before, a bad decision, I will not go to school anymore, that's a bad decision. I will not come to church anymore, that's a bad decision. I will run away from home, that's a bad decision. I will go to where my father, my mommy will not see me, that's a bad decision. Bad decisions will destroy your life. Only good decisions will develop your life. Repent of a bad decision. Come on now and take a good decision. The decision to get saved. Return back, people of God, if you have gone astray. Decision to remain in a place where you are studying the Word of God. Good decision will help you throughout your life. 